Hi, this is the third instructional video about how to use affective tweets. In this video, I will show you how to use the package for training sentiment classification problems in the absence of training data. This is a very common situation that sometimes we want to train a sentiment classification model, but we don't have the resources for getting data annotated into sentiment classes. There is an approach called distance supervision for training sentiment models from an unlabeled data. The idea is to rely on some heuristics to obtain those labels in an automatic fashion. The first approach we're going to explore is the idea of using distance supervision using emoticons to label tweets. So the idea is that if we collect tweets with emoticons, positive and negative emoticons, we can assume that the, lex that the emoticons are labeling the sentiment of the tweet. So the assumption is a tweet with a positive emoticon is likely to be positive, and a tweet with a ne negative emoticon is likely to be negative. So I'm going to open the Weka Explorer again, and I'm going to start opening a data set of unlabeled tweets. So we again go to our home folder and open the affected tweets data. And we open this data set formed by unlabeled tweets, just raw content. So we have one single attribute called content with a tweet. So the first idea we're going to explore is how to uh, turn this data set into an annotated data set for sentiment using the emoticon annotation approach. So the idea is every time we see a tweet with an emoticon, with a positive emoticon, we label it as positive. Every time we see a tweet with a negative emoticon, we will label it as negative. The package has a filter to do that called Lexicon Distance Supervision. So in this filter, we need to have a lexicon in our format. By default, it uses a lexicon of emoticons. Okay. And we will label tweets if based on emoticons. So I will show you. Yes, see that you can see how this lexicon looks like. So we have in lexicons, some lexicons in our format, like the emoticon one. And this is basically a lexicon, a data set of 95 instances, just emoticons and two possible labels, negative and positive. So we have positive and negative emoticons. Okay, so let's try to use this lexicon to label tweets automatically. So we go back to the unlabeled tweets data unlabeled. And now let's run the filter. So keep in mind that all tweets in with that do not contain emoticons will be discarded. That's because we have less instances here. So now we have a new data set formed by positive and negative instances that were automatically labeled. Okay, so let's try to use this automatically annotated data to train a classifier that can be deployed now on real tweets, tweets that we know the sentiment class and see what kind of performance we can get. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to rename the, sec the, the target class polarity into class, into the name class, because I want to make the training data and the test data uh, compatible. So with the same names, attribute names. So Weka has a filter called rename attribute, and we're going to rename the last attribute from polarity to class, okay, great. 
And now what I'm going to do is to use the filtered classifier in the same way as in the first tutorial to train a model. But this is going to, the model will be tested now on a different data set. So just to refresh things, I'm going to use now the multi-filter here. And I'm going to use first the tweet to sparse filter vector. And as you remember, those filters will add more filters here. And I would like to reshape my attribute space at the end to get rid of the string attribute and have the class at the end. To do this, I'm going to add the reorder filter here in my multi-filter. And I'm going to start from the third attribute. The third one is going to be the first new attribute. From the third attribute until the last one. And then I will add the second one, which is the class at the end. And this should give me a data set formed by just attributes and the class label. Great, this is what we wanted. So I will copy this configuration to my clipboard. I will go back to this data that I created using emoticons as labels. And now I am going to train a classifier, but I will deploy my predictions on another data set. This data set is called six human post neck. So here we have tweets, positive and negative tweets that were manually annotated by, by humans. So I will paste, I will use, sorry, the filter classifier here. Filtered classifier, but I will use the filter, the multi-filter I set up previously. And I will use a linear model from LibLinear with default parameters. Let's see what we get. Okay, we got a model of an F measure, weighted F measure of 0.6. Not very good, but decent. Of course, if one wants to get good results from this approach of distance supervision, one needs to have a, a larger data set of unlabeled tweets. So we can get a fair amount of tweets with emoticons that we can use as labels, okay? An alternative approach, now I wish this was the first distance supervision approach I wanted to show you, but effective tweets also implement two other ones that are called, uh, that create synthetic data. So the idea is to go beyond emoticons and exploit lexicons because we have, we can get exploit more unlabeled tweets. So instead of discarding all tweets that do not contain emoticons, we are going to use all tweets containing words from a given lexicon. And lexicons are formed, for, by, are formed by many more words than uh, emoticons. We can have thousands, thousands of, th thousands of words. So one filter to create uh, synthetic attributes is called the ASA. But to do this, first we need to start again with a corpus of unlabeled data. Because again, keep in mind that the goal of distance supervision is to be able to train models using machine learning from unlabeled tweets, using some heuristics to get data annotated in an automatic fashion. So here we have my data set of unlabeled tweets. And the first thing I'm going to do is to add a dummy attribute called class, just because I want to make my train data and my test data compatible. Because I, once I train a model, from these instances, annotated instances I will generate, I want them to have the same shape as the target set of tweets annotated by sentiment. This sounds complicated now, but I hope you will understand it as I uh, show you. Okay, so I will add now an attribute called class as the last attribute in the last position with two possible values, negative and positive. I apply this now and now I have positive and negative labels. Of course, all my tweets are still unlabeled. It's just a dummy attribute name. 
So the, bad, the sentiment class is unknown. So now I'm going to use the ASA algorithm. ASA is an, synth, is an algorithm for creating synthetic positive and negative instances using unlabeled tweets and one lexicon. So what does ACA do? ASA, sorry, ASA stands for Annotate Sample Average. So in this algorithm, what we do is we use unlabeled tweets and a given lexicon, and we will create synthetic instances by averaging, by sampling and averaging tweets containing words with the same sentiment. So the idea is we have three tweets with the word uh, love, we can extract attributes from it using word engrams or all the kind of things. And then we can average all these vectors and get them annotated as the, with the label of the word positive in that case. We can repeat the same process many, time, many times until we get a synthetic annotated data set. So here we're setting, we're getting 1,000 positive instances and 1,000 negative instances. And we are setting that we are getting 10, each instance is created from, by averaging the vectors of 10 tweets, okay? So if I run this and I'm using a word attributes and also I can use word clusters, okay? And I can also have a mean attribute docs. So what is the minimum number of instances for an attribute to be considered? Let's set this to three. Okay, if I run this, I will create now a data set of synthetic annotated tweets. So this is taking, so Weka is working on this. And sorry, and now we got a data set of 2,000 instances. We have word attributes and word clusters attributes, and we have a class now. 1,000 positive instances and 1,000 negative instances. But our goal will be now to train a model on this data and then deploy it on real tweets. So that will mean that we need to make the tweets have the same attribute space. So how can we do this? We can use the filter classifier for this. So we can use ASA, we copy this configuration, go to the classify panel, use six human coded as the test set. And here we can have, we can use ASA as the filters of, of our filtered classifier. So ASA, when it's run using the filter classifier, in the first pass, so for the training data, we'll create these synthetic tweets by sampling and averaging tweets according to the label, the sentiment of the lexicon. But on the second batch, we will just transform the test tweets into vectors that are compatible to the training ones. So we will create word tweet vectors using the same attributes we have here, like word attributes, and in our case, those include word attributes and word cluster attributes. So if we run this, now we can get an estimation of how this heuristic works. And we obtain an F measure of 0.665. Oh, uh, again, this was just for an example. Uh, a, this kind of techniques work much better if a larger corpus of, corpus of un, annotated tweets is used. I recommend using a corpus of 2 million tweets. And this will require you having, uh, using more memory. And the best way to do this is to use Weka uh, with the command line interface. Okay. Alternatively, apart from, from using ASA, Affected Tweets implements another uh, distance supervision filter. It is very similar to SA, ASA, 
but it's called PTCM. And PTCM stands for Partition Tweet Centroid Model. Uh, trying to select this one. Where is hmm, PTCM? There you are. So in PTCM, we use something very similar as the tweet centroid model we used for creating lexicons. If you remember with the tweet centroid model, what we were doing is representing words by averaging tweet vectors. The nice thing of this is that when we aver if we represent words by averaging tweet vectors, that means that our vectors for tweets and words are both compatible. So both reside in the same attribute space. So what PTCM is doing is uh, taking the corpus of unlimited tweets creating word vectors using the word centroid model, and then we'll label those words according to the sentiment labels provided by a given lexicon. In our case, you are using the Bing Liu lexicon by default. Uh, as a very cool future, there's also this thing of partitioning the, the tweet centroids, uh, which is described here. Is there is this property called part number. So basically we can we can increase the number of instances we have by partition the, the tweets and troids. So imagine we have the word love occurring in 100 tweets instead of averaging all those tweets for getting one single instance that will be positive. We can partition this instance into various instance instances by just reducing the number of uh, tweets per centroid. So we will set this by to 10. And this will increase, increase the number of labeled tweets, labeled instances we get uh, using the lexicon and this heuristic. OK. Let's try this technique. Let's set the mean attribute docs to 3. And run this. And we should obtain very similar results than when we used a ASA. So we got an F measure of 0.645, a little bit worse than the previous model. OK, so in this video, we have concluded this demo. So in summary, I have shown you how to use effective tweets for training sentiment models from unlabeled data using knowledge provided by lexicons. This is very useful when trying to perform sentiment analysis in the real world when obtaining the sentiment labels at the tweet level can be very tedious and time consuming. Okay, I hope you like this video and see you soon.